Hello and welcome to my new video. This time, Charlotte's charming AI voice will accompany you on a journey through the world of prompting. And because I kept feeling like Alice in Wonderland when I was researching for the video, you often find Alice in the video as a motif and as a test subject, so to speak. As I think it can be helpful to also understand some of the technical processes behind the image generation. This video will have more of an explanatory character. In other words, it's less about building exciting workflows and more about showing how the model processes our text input in the first place. The various clip text and code nodes obviously play a decisive role for us. And there are now a whole range of slightly different versions of these. The differences lie primarily in the additional options that can be used. There are all sorts of terms that you are sure to have come across before when dealing with stable diffusion and comfy UI. And by trying them out, you can also find out how their settings affect image generation. At some point during the preparation for this video, however, I had enough of not knowing what was actually going on in the background, and thus began my descent down Stable Diffusion's rabbit hole. As this is also incredibly complex, I have decided to make two videos on this topic. This one will first deal with the technical side of prompt processing and the various options for influencing image generation. My initial idea is, firstly, that for every change you can achieve via the prompt, you could save yourself additional adapters, control nets, and so on. And secondly, if we can change the way stable diffusion processes our prompts directly, this should work even better when combined. But I should not forget to mention that my academic background is not in computer science, but in philosophy and sociology. This may help in reading and understanding complicated texts. But my limit is reached when it comes to the multiplication of high dimensional vectors. So the following is more of a conceptual approach to the processes in the background of comfy UI and stable diffusion as I understand them. It all starts with the tensors. More precisely, the empty latent image node generates a null tensor as soon as we click on Q prompt. This defines the dimensions, the resolution, that stable diffusion will have available, and at the same time provides the image noise from which the model creates our image during the denoising process. The so-called latent space Sounds kind of epic. Tensors are basically complex lists of numbers that serve as representations for image properties, prompt contents and instructions for the necessary mathematical operations. To summarize, we can say that the whole process of image generation consists of mathematical operations and matching processes between different tensors and these go through as many steps as we have set in the K-sampler. The different models like Stable Diffusion 3, Flux, and also the SDXL models provide interesting images when you ask them to generate images of their architecture. Or to visualize tensors. Some of the prompts could even be used for artistic images. But back to our prompt and the clip text encoder. After we have started the generation, the model begins to break down our text input into tokens, i.e. into small sequential units. In order to then convert them into numerical representations that can be further processed by the model. so-called embeddings. Embeddings are vectors that encode the position and semantic information of a token in a continuous vector space. Ultimately, 
This means that they are fed to the K-sampler by the encoder as embedded parameters, i.e. as conditions for the denoising process. More poetically, but still appropriately, we can say that they are embedded in the tensor flow. But what exactly do the terms we encounter in the various clip text encoder nodes mean? And what processes do they allow us to access? And what influence do we gain when we change the values of the Q, V and K vectors? To do this, we need to look at how the encoder node is structured and how it works. At the very least, we need to get a rough overview. The attention mechanisms, or more precisely the self-attention, are particularly relevant for us. It's all about the weights. In order for our prompt to get its full weight on the image generation, the clip text encoder must first give it its weight. It achieves this through a series of vector operations that it performs on the text blocks after it has converted them into tokens and the weights, i.e. parameters of its own architecture and the model used. The clip text encoder consists of 12 identical layers. When the prompt is entered, it calculates Q, K and V vectors, which stand for query, key and value for each token created. Each query vector stands for a token whose meaning i.e. its relationship to the others, has yet to be recognized. The key vector stands for the tokens that are searched. A value, the attention score, is calculated from the results of the individual queries. This measures the similarity between the query and key vectors. At the end of each layer, probabilities are generated from the attention scores using the softmax function which represent the importance of each piece of text information. These attention weights are then used to weight the value vectors. In the final step, the encoder creates a very detailed representation of the prompt. This representation, or final embedding, contains all the weighted information about the meaning and the relationships between the tokens. In addition, it creates a special token that is added to the beginning of the input sequence and represents the overall representation of the entire input prompt. This process is called pooling, and this completes the generation of the text tensor, which is now used as a condition in the denoising process. If we now jump into the tensor flow, we end up at the K sampler. This was the self-attention mechanism whose task was to weight the relationships between the tokens, i.e. text components. The next important attention mechanism is cross-attention. Here, the query, key and value queries described above take place between the image and the text tensor. However, this involves the model recognizing the appropriate relationship between parts of the image and the prompt. This means that the generated query vector represents a section of the image that searches for the similarity between it and the matching equivalent in the prompt. Depending on how many steps we have set in the K sampler, the model repeats this process until the final image is generated from the image noise. But how does this help us with the prompts? There are various tools or nodes in Comfy UI that allow us to intervene directly in the attention mechanism. For example, clip attention multiply. There, we see them again, the Q, K and V vectors and their output. If we set the value of the value vector to zero, the result will certainly not surprise us. No Alice to be seen. The prompt input was practically ignored. If we set the keys to zero, the result is no better. Setting query and output to zero even destroys the process completely. We only get Alice back if we give the attention mechanism, yeah, our prompt, a chance. Like so often, it has a lot to do with trial and error, but we can certainly give our prompt a fine tuning. You can watch my complete series of experiments with the attention tools in the uncut version of the video if you like. 
they basically all work according to the same principle, except for the unit temporal attention multiply node, which also enables the manipulation of self-attention and cross-attention on a structural and temporal level, with interesting results, especially when it comes to fine-tuning. That's it for now. There will be more about the practical applications in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful and or interesting, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. And don't forget, have a nice day.